whenever you're ready. Hey YouTube, it's uh, Ryan here for CBC TV. Yep. Um, we're like a week. That's my phone. We're like a week past um, Regionals. Vancouver Regionals, and we did a tech profile there, but it was really shitty quality because there were people talking and there was guys getting awards and stuff, and we were in a hurry to get the bus. So. Uh, without too much bullshit, I'm just gonna get right to it. Um, so yeah, I used Kagero for the tournament. Uh, I think we talked about that during the vlog video, I can't remember. But regardless, um, I chose Kagero because I'm comfortable with it. I know Kagero, I'm good with Kagero. And um, it topped pretty good. Um, I don't have my invitation here, but I got fourth place, which is sweet. So I'm gonna be going to Chicago this year, hopefully, uh, to compete in Continentals. Um, so for my deck, I run Red Pulse, Striker Kid as my starter. Um, I use him over the other ones, like Fargo and all that, for a couple good reasons. Um, with Fargo, it's the Overlord-centric starter, and its skill is that upon soul charging it, uh, my Vanguard gets the ability to destroy rearguards when it hits, which is cool, except it defeats the purpose, because the whole reason I'm using the deck is to hit with the Limit Break. And oftentimes they're going to guard, so I, I feel like Fargo's skill is wasted, and the whole minusing myself from the field before going to the soul is wasted, um, just because my opponent's just going to guard all the attacks, right? The whole point of Rebirth is to not win with six attack, or three attacks, six drive checks, but it's to win steadily through advantage over time um, with the, the two Vanguard attacks. So Red Pulse is just easier, because uh, it helps guarantee four things. Uh, it helps with not risk riding, uh, albeit with a chance of failure. Uh, helps get a break ride target if I'm sitting on Dote, or Dragon of Overlord, sorry. It um, gets me an extra card in my hand to discard for break ride, and it lets me luck sack into my second develop if I want to. Uh, so Red Pulse is just universally better. The 4k is mitigated by Burning Horn's uh, 12k gainer, so it swings for 16, and it can just sit on my field as a free 4 runner for uh, Rebirth Limit Break as well. So that's Red Pulse. Uh, as well, Sad Egg is situationally good when I use them with Burnout, that's about it. Uh, Terragloth requires two dragons, which I have none. And then Diva and Seal Dragon Egg are both washes, but they're minusing washes, so it's not worth it. Uh, I'll do triggers first, like usual. So I run both of the sexy heal triggers, Barbara and Teresa. So, yeah, four, like usual. Uh, three RP, one Gatling Claw. Uh, I did this for a reason. Gatling Claw really could just be an RP, but it's kind of there, like, if I draw into it in my opening hand, I keep it, blow up a, a starting Vanguard, and voila. Uh, it fills the soul with its skill, but it's also a counterblast, so it's kind of like give and take. RP, I can soul charge for free. It's like Marble, which is amazing. If anyone of you remember what Marble is, it's a really <laughs> old card. Um, but yeah, when, when Kagero got a Marble clone, I was super happy, because Marble was, like, the best draw trigger ever. And it still is, really. But yeah, three draw triggers, um, and then... An assortment of nine critical triggers, including Kai's four Tars, so I can wreck with Tar. Um, I run nine crit three draw because I understand that critical triggers are universally better than draw triggers. Um, but with the nature of the skill of Dragonic Overlord, I need discard targets, and draw triggers help me get placeholders in my hand to discard. I don't really care about losing in shield, I just want something to discard so I can use Overlord, and that's what the draw triggers are for, so I don't waste hand size. Um, so that's it. Uh, on to grade ones. So I run one quintet wall, three perfect guards. It's kind of a shady mix up, but with quintet walls, um, I find I mill up my deck too fast, and this is something that Ian has found in testing, as with Zach. Just with quintet walls, if you're drive checking so many times per turn, and then you're dropping five units, like you deck out really quickly, and I don't want to lose to deck out. I have the one for emergency's sake. It's also in here as an early game guard, so I can throw overlords into the drop zone for burnout. Um, and then the three perfect guards, because usually I use four, but I have the quintet, and you can only have four sentinels. So that's that. Um, two Calamity Tower Wyvern, just to use the soul a little bit. The soul's primary, primarily for Dragonic Burnout, but Calamity helps me get the extra card for discarding. Um, the 5k power is mitigated by Burning Horn and my Overlord Vanguards, and it's a decent lock target if I'm running Dominate, but I'm not in this deck, so that's it. Um, three Eternal Bringer Griffin. People like to call them Joey Chan. I call them <laughs> Kaka. He uh, thins the deck by getting Overlords out of my deck and then um, lets me search for a new Overlord. Um, you cannot use him with Nouvelle because he specifically says discard a grade 3 Kagero. 
which is why I don't run so many uh, Nouvelles. But uh, in this deck, he's essentially essential because if you want the cross break ride, or if you want the cross ride or anything, you need to have Overlord Vanguard, and this guy helps you guarantee it more often than not. Mm -hmm. So is he slow? He's full, sorry. And then Four Bar, who is my best friend, he's the 8k booster. He makes everything hit magic numbers, including Calamity Tower against cross from Vanguards. Um, yeah, I mean, you just need your vanillas. Um, he becomes the destroyer of souls when you put him behind Burning Horn because he just rocks every rear guard in the history of existence. Palamides fears him. Um, and he helps my all of my vanguards hit 21, which is super essential, especially in this format. Uh, grade threes, my tech choice for the deck is Burger. Or grade two, sorry. My tech choice is Burger. Um, with reverse limit break, he's just going to be locked anyways, so I don't really care if he's in the front row. He's mostly there for the extra shield. For you new players who don't know what Burger is, he's the special interceptor for Kagero, came out in the second set. Uh, and basically, when you intercept with him, he gets an extra 5,000 shields, so he's essentially a 10k shield uh, in the Guardian Circle, which is super awesome. I've used him tons of times in Vancouver uh, and in testing to keep myself safe, and honestly, if I didn't have him, I would have lost, and I can guarantee that. Uh, as well, he's not a minus to use in the deck, because behind bar, he makes 16, which is essential. Um, and he's just a solid rearguard. Like, look how cool this art is. It's just gorgeous. Uh, others, I have Burning Horn Dragon, which is a staple in Overlord-based decks because it's a 12k attacker. Before you use Reverse Limit Break, um, this thing snipes rearguards or vanguards that aren't uh, cross-ridden in every single rearguard in existence. Super nice. Uh, he also makes my draw triggers usable before I can find better boosters. And then for Dragonic Burnout, which is my primary method of controlling my opponent's field, uh, this guy sends overlords that I'm dropping with Griffin uh, to the bottom of my deck, so it's still technically deck thinning because they're not in my deck, they're just on the bottom. Uh, as well, um, I can hit anything, and it's only one soul blast, so it's like a better Berserk Dragon, it's a better Corduroy. It's like this is the best Rearguard Hate card that Kagero has. With the exception that it's only possible to use in Overlord decks, which is you know, totally fine with me. Uh, so that's it for grade twos, one zeros, on to grade threes. So the star of this deck is the Dragonic Overlord Break Ride. Um, its limit break skill is when you ride on top of it, it gets 10k, and counter blast one, discard one card, stand after attacking a rear guard. Uh, so this combos with their birth, where you can attack three times by swinging at rear guard and then vanguard and then vanguard again. Um, he's the second best, um, break ride because of his cost effectiveness next to Weathercloth and Dauntless in that order. Uh, and with Nouvelle, he is the second best break ride to use, period. Um, Dauntless is the best, and then Weathercloth is okay, but you're kind of wasting the nuke if you use Weathercloth. So, uh, anyways, uh, as well, he gets 12k if you have more rear guards than your opponent, just like Dauntless. Uh, and his arm artwork is sick, and searchable he like this guy is the crux of the deck you need this guy in your deck to be able to use every single other card in the deck it's just amazing uh totally happy you got reprinted right Ian? <laughs> oh yeah totally oh yeah uh okay first final gambit win condition card whatever you want to call it my winning image uh dragon overlord the rebirth it's kagero second reverse unit and primarily the best one um dude Anyways, uh, its skill is lock five rearguards. Uh, if you lock five rearguards, it gains 10,000 and the ability to stand again after attacking Vanguard by discarding two cards. So with Overlord, you can attack three times, drive check six times, rack up massive triggers, and destroy my opponent. I can attack for a maximum of 63,000 for critical if I wanted to. It is amazing. <laughs> it is fantastically amazing. Uh, his biggest weakness is Galendio, so you can read my blog somewhere around here. Um... I'll probably in the description below. Yeah, you'll probably just have to go to the Facebook page or something, or you'll just never read it. I don't really care. <laughs> um, regardless, yeah, his biggest weakness is Glendius, because Glendius is a mega lock. If used the turn before, means that if I don't finish my opponent this turn, I lose. Uh, so that's why Novell's in here. But for right now, Rebirth is my primary gambit, because against every single deck, they just can't keep up with the pressure. I am attacking twice every single turn with my Vanguard for a minimum 15k shield to guard every single time. So I'm dropping three triggers for them to guard at minimum if I'm not hitting triggers. Uh, it's just amazing. As well as with seven Overlord targets, I got plenty of cards to use with Burnout, I got plenty of Search targets with Red Pulse. Uh, in fact, my ratio, if you count Nouvelle as a grade three, would be 14-11-9, uh, which I think is the optimal one. Or 13-11-9, something like that. 
but it just like higher chance to not get grade stuck, which came in handy because I really only got grade stuck once the entire tournament. Around uh, seven, right? Uh, uh semifinals. Yeah. So I was already guaranteed, but I didn't get further than that, which really pissed me off. Yeah, same thing. Uh, second final Gambit Endgame winning image is Transcendence Dragon Nivelle Vague, who is in here specifically for okay. the Mirror Match and for Glendios. Uh, the whole reason Nivelle's in here is because I am using strategy to use my opponent's deck against them. I know the weakness of both Kagro and both uh, Glendios is the fact that they're regular. Well, for Glendios, the grade ratio bucks him over because he has so little cards to guard with that are non trigger. And Rubidium. And Rubidium, right? So with Nouvelle, because I have rear guards, I use my rear guards to snipe out the reverse units as hard as I can. And Nouvelle swings at Vanguard, they can't redirect, they don't have the zero, zeros to guard with, it's either perfect guard or die. So if I had a crit on Nouvelle, I generally win. Yep. There's, there's no going back from that. Uh, his limit break is totally detrimental, uh, it just ruins everything. That's why he's also good against the mirror match, because with Rebirth, if you can limit break, nuke Rebirth field, it's really hard, and Ian can attest to this, oh, really hard to come back from uh, that. Testing was just cr uh, Yeah, uh, it's, he didn't see it coming, it happened, and he was so sad. Um, and I threw it into my deck. Yeah, so Novell is honestly probably the best tech choice next to Broker that I've ever decided for this deck. And honestly, if you guys want to give it a shot, you won't be disappointed. So that's the deck. It uh, got me fourth place. Um, honestly, I can't do it without my friends, but really the deck is good too. And skill. You need some skill to play this too. It's not totally autopilot, but you do have to have some thinking. Hi, I'm right here. You have to have some thinking involved to use it. Um, yeah. After this, and I promise it's going to happen, because I know the vlog, we promised stuff and it didn't happen. After this, Ian and I are going to sit down and do a tournament report to discuss, you know, decks we saw, um, how we feel we did, um, what could have done better. Ian's going to do a lot of talking for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and all that good <laughs> shit. So, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. Um, okay. Or to the side, or up there, whatever country you're in, I don't really care. Hi, Zach. What's up? What do you fight for? Yo, I fight for my friends. Friendship yeah. is magic. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's it. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And don't forget to stand up to the occasion. Bye-bye. <clears throat>